Hi, I'm Lisa Neff Wheeler. I've lived in New Jersey the majority of my life. I've lived in the Hillsborough, Montgomery, New Jersey area for over 30 years. Love living here. The area has maintained its country feel while having the conveniences of a more urban area. I look forward to sharing why I love the area and the local businesses. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Lisa Neff Wheeler, Realtor with Caldwell Banker Realty. And I'm here with Jennifer Suze LeBron mm -hmm. and Layla as well. Um, and Jennifer and her husband are the owners of Suze Radon and Electric. Um, they provide um, radon testing services as well as radon. mitigation services. So um, we'll talk more about that. But I'm looking forward to this because I always wondered, I mean, I've had a house, two houses built. You know, why do we do radon? And I've learned as a realtor the importance of that. Um, but I want to, I'm interested in it to understand the family business because it is a family business. Um, Jennifer's parents actually started the business. Uh, learning more about that and then learning more about her company. So thank you for joining me, Layla. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Appreciate and um, I appreciate you doing this. And how have you been? Yeah, great. Doing good. Good. So why don't we start? Um, first, why don't you uh, describe your business? Yeah. So um, our business does radon testing and mitigation and repairs on old systems. Um, so basically, you know, during the home sale process, mm -hmm. the, the mitigate, you know, the um, house will be tested. And if it fails, it's meaning it's above 4.0 or higher. Um, then it's customary in that process for the sellers to provide remediation for the buyers. Uh -huh. um, of course, we do remediation and testing for people who aren't selling, um, but for the most part, our business goes along with the real estate market. So, um, you know, when, when they call us, you know, we try to get remediation going as soon as possible. We do all the permits, we do the installations and do everything start to finish. Tell, you know, because um, not everyone, if they haven't gone through the real estate process, they don't understand why radon is, is a bad thing for lack of better words. So why don't you do a little bit of an education to yeah. our audience yeah. out there um, so they understand why yeah. it's important to do yeah. that. So basically um, back in 1986 was when um, the regulation changed in New Jersey requiring um, homes to be tested for radon um, during the home sale. Not that you can't test any time, but that's mostly when people tend to find out. Um, reason being is that radon is um, the leading cause of lung cancer in people who don't smoke and is secondary cause of lung cancer in people who do smoke. So um, it's definitely up there and is responsible for 14% of lung cancer cases. So, um, you know, and people don't understand that just because you test once for radon, that you're never going to have it in in the life of your of your house. Things change, things change on people's properties. You install a pool, you do landscaping, you plant trees. All of these things change the way the air moves, you know, in your basement, um, the way the water flows. Everything is kind of connected, and you know, at some point, the radon can start to kind of build on itself. So um, people just don't understand that it's. Just because you passed one radon test doesn't mean that you're always going to pass. Interesting. And just so everyone knows, radon is a natural occurring gas, essentially, that comes from the ground and like, you know, kind of from the magma of the earth. It just yeah. comes up and that's that's kind of how it gets created. Yeah, it seeps up through the cracks and crevices in the, in the earth. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's in, in the outside air even, but when it's a problem is when it starts to stack up yep. in someone's house. Yep. So your business is a family business mm -hmm. and I find family businesses interesting because mm -hmm. my dad and I, at one point we were toying with creating business. Um, and we decided it was better for our relationship. <laughs> no, we not. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about how it was starting in a family business, yeah. you know, essentially working with your parents. What's it like? Yeah. I mean, it definitely wasn't, um, what I thought I would be doing, <laughs> but it sort of was one of these things where life kind of took over where, um, you know, I worked prior to working in this business. 
um, in sales. And then I stayed home with my kids. And then basically it was my ticket to be able to work out of my house, yep. uh, raise my family. And my parents and I um, actually think that we should write a book on how to transition a family business because we did it over many years. Uh -huh. um, you know, they would um, work for like three days. I would work for four days and we would kind of just stagger it back and forth. So they were constantly in the transition uh -huh. for a number of years, you know, helping because there's so many things, so many layers oh, to, yeah. a, to a business, you know, there's insurances and there's, you know, just learning the business itself and, and the licensing and all of those things. And um, the reason that I got involved with it is because my husband right out of college started working with my dad. Gotcha. So um, it was like he was intertwined with it and then I kind of got intertwined with it and, uh, and it just became, became our thing. That's good. Yeah. So what surprised you the most about owning your own business? Like for me, it's like, where does family end? Yeah. And where does business begin? Yeah. And because bi your bus own business can be all consuming. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. So for me, it's been those guardrails. How do you implement yeah. the guardrails? Yeah, it definitely. I mean, that for sure, just the number of different hats that I wear mm -hmm. is remarkable. Um, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. It's just it's just required if you yeah. own a small yeah. business to yeah. be able to do everything because you can't hire somebody to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the thing that surprises me and I think surprises other people the most about our business is that my husband and I are partners and that we don't kill each other <laughs> um, wow. because you know we <laughs> do work together yeah. sometimes I manage him sometimes he manages yeah. me yeah. Um, and it's a back and forth thing that we kind of share control and we share you know everything uh -huh. um, and um, you know the beauty of it is that I know exactly what his abilities are and what he can do inside and out because right. we have you know, we've known each other for 30 years. Right. Um, so it makes it actually really easy in some mm -hmm. respects because, mm -hmm. you know, he's the number one person in my life. So right. of course I can sell him better than anybody else. <laughs> um, and I know he's required to be there. You know, that is yeah. one thing that I've always said. Sometimes it's not easy working with family, but, um, you know, my cousin is our electrician. Uh -huh. We grew up together and, um, you know, but it's one of these things like I know he is going to be there. Right. Unless like hell freezes over, he will be there. I can count on yeah. him. So um, it's, uh, you know, and, and it's been different phases of family. Now we, the people that we hire, we just consider them family, you know, gotcha. because they're not necessarily Seuss's or whatever. But, um, uh -huh. you know, that's kind of how that's the feel that we have is like we want people to be happy. Um, with our work, we take it very seriously. It's our name. Uh -huh. it's, it's my dad's legacy. Right. And, um, you know, we just try to do the best that we can for people. That's awesome. So what motivates you and drives you to do what you do? Uh, well, as we were talking about before, uh, the college tuitions <laughs> <laughs> is the number one thing. But, um, you know, aside from that, um, something that I find that's very interesting about being a, a woman business owner in um predominantly a male yeah. driven industry mm -hmm. is the fact that I think there's something a little bit different about me because most of the time women are making the phone calls about this and they have no idea what they're talking about. They have no idea what a radon system is, why they need it. Uh -huh. They just know somebody told them to make that phone call and schedule that appointment. Right. And there are times when I, just yesterday, I had a woman literally crying. She was so overwhelmed about the whole process. And, you know, this usually comes at a time when people are so stressed out anyway. Oh, because yeah. selling a house is a nightmare. Buying is a nightmare. And, um, you know, and then you throw the whole risk of cancer into there. And mm -hmm. then people are going and they're, they're, you know, Google searching. And it's like, you know, it, it just gets to a point where there's a lot of tensions. Because right. people are thinking, oh, my God, should I not buy this house? And I mean, there are times when literally I feel like I am holding the hand of like a divorced woman yeah. or, you know, um, an elderly woman mm -hmm. or something. And, mm -hmm. and it really does feel like, like a purpose, you know, it's like, uh, I didn't plan to be in this business. Um, and I'm sure my high school science teachers are laughing themselves to sleep <laughs> at night, <laughs> but, um, you know, I ended up in it and it's kind of like one of those, you know, it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, and then, yeah. you know, this has been my life's career. So I've obviously, you know, gotten become knowledgeable at it yeah. over time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so definitely, uh, definitely interesting. That's awesome. What is something most people don't know about your business? I think a lot of people don't understand the nuts and bolts of the system and why it works. 
Um, basically a radon system is meant to tap into the airspace that's underneath the floor of the basement yep. or the slab. Yep. Um, and once everything is sealed, it kind of creates a cap and then the piping system goes out of the house or in newer homes up through the house and out mm -hmm. the roof. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's the idea is for the air to get, you know, the gases to get sucked out before they have a chance to seep in. Yep. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of people just don't really understand, you know, they, they people sometimes think that we're showing up with like forklifts and you know and cranes and things like you know and it's really not anything other than just a simple piping system right you know right. so it's 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 a lot more you know it's less invasive than people think i mean people are surprised that we can do this job in two hours um you know they think that it's a couple of days job and that's part of their anxiety when they call is they're like oh my god you know how are we going to get all this done and it's like really all we need is a day yeah you know and the yeah. permit process is a different story but you know especially we, i know i know so um <laughs> but you know we we, we figure we have it down to a science so we've done that's it good. enough so we can we can get people over that hurdle for sure that's good i mean you're right because buying and selling a house is a traumatic experience it and, and it's traumatic is probably a little harsh it's more of an emotional experience yeah. so yeah it's good you make it easy and help them through it i really do i mean myself and my um my secretary sandy um she's worked with me for i don't know maybe like eight years but mm -hmm. um we both have that like calming way where we're like don't worry we're gonna take care of it you know i used to dread when people called me with a homeowners association because i'd be like oh my god i can't but i'm so good at it now yeah that i'm like just give it to me i will deal with it you have enough going on yep. you know i will handle it and it's you know for me it's easy because i do yep. it all the time yep. so um yeah we just we try to make it simple so that we're just taking the worry off of their their mind so cool so Anything going on, special or different, that you would like the audience to know about? Well, you know, I saw that question and I was thinking about going a lot of different ways with it because a lot has changed in our business. Uh -huh. You're probably aware, being a realtor, that um, you know there's a lot of uh, changes to the regulations regarding testing. Yep. So that's part of like some of the price increases that have taken place in our industry is because of regulations that we have to follow. Um, so long story short, we know what the regulations are and how to follow them and it doesn't really matter. But one thing that I thought might be interesting for people to understand um, is, you know, the DEP suggests testing every two years for radon because things can change. A new product that's out there, and I don't sell it. It's just something that you can buy on Amazon. Is um, there's a lot of different brands, but um, sit down. My tip. Um, a lot of different brands, but um, Air Things. It's it's a monitor that you can plug in, oh, and really? um, it's uh, you know it's a catch twenty two because it's it's not certified by the state as right. a viable testing option. Right. But I can say we have been a lot of customers have them. You know, they purchase that first. It's like $150. And uh -huh. um, they monitor their own levels, you know, for a while to kind of see yep. what their averages yep. are. Um, but I find that, um, you know, it's just one of those things that once they see that, you know, okay, your summer numbers are maybe around this level and then right. your winter numbers are maybe around this level. Yeah. Um, because you're, if you're testing every two years, you might say, okay, well, I'll test every July. Well, you know what? The, the radon numbers in July are probably going to be lower than they are in the winter time. Yeah. That just has to do with the use of the furnace and, uh -huh. and everything being closed up right, and, and right. all of that. So, um, yeah, I think that that's something that is exciting in our business that, um, you know, is affordable and people can have it and look at it and, um, and be able to know when that time it comes that their levels are starting to be on the rise. Um, and you know, then they don't have to be like a lot of the customers that call me that are like, Oh my God, had I known I would have done something sooner, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and that's a shame because it's uh -huh. like, you know, you would do anything for your family if you oh, thought yeah. it could be harmful yeah. to them. But if yeah. you don't know, then you can't make that decision. Right. And then you're making this investment for somebody else, you know, when the, when the house sells yep. and, and then yep. it's, you know, you're just paying it on the way out. Nobody likes to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it reduces your ROI. <laughs> oh, 
Well, thank you so much for your time today. It yeah. was really great meeting you. Thank you. It was you great too. meeting Layla. <laughs> <laughs> she finally let us. Let us. <laughs> I'm a dog person, so out of here. Um, and to our audience, thanks for watching. If you own a business or know of someone who owns a business and would like to be featured, please don't hesitate to contact me at 732-267-1204. See you on the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.